My name is Edward Kunyanga and um, my current title is ICF title is country director for ICF in Kenya. And uh, the measure evaluation lingo, I'm a monitoring and evaluation specialist. And I've been working for measure on and off now for the last, um, well, initially for three years, and then I went out to work for a few two evaluation, which was like a sister project to measure evaluation, but then I'm, I'm now back again for the last, uh, I would say, seven months okay. working for measure evaluation. What was, when did measure evaluation first come to Kenya? It goes way back, I think, in the year 2000, if I'm not wrong, I think the year 2000, mostly working with National Inns Control Council to develop their MND frameworks and uh, starting off the work on the community information systems. And actually, as it were, the first technical specialist supporting major evolution work in Kenya is the current director, Sean. She is the one who used to do more. She actually is the one who started major evolution work in Kenya through the National Health Control Council. And um, that's how back, how back it goes, 2000, I think, or 2001. Okay. And uh, what it does currently, what is measure eva what does measure evaluation cover or do in Kenya? What are the team's responsibilities right now? Um, the team, we, we are building a team actually. I must start there because it's, you know, we ran a team that worked for the previous project, the AFIO 2 evaluation, but uh, with ongoing awards with the national mechanisms from USID, we have lost some part of our team to the other project, we call it AFIA Info. So we are slowly starting to build another team for major evaluation. So at the moment, the, we have uh, myself and then we have an MND specialist who just joined us uh, two months ago. And um, we have, we have uh, we will have a, a layer in terms of uh, senior associates, and only one of them is on board right now, Catherine Bayre. But then after that, we will have um, a series of regional associates. So, I mean, in terms of what they are doing now, I would say we are just starting to staff up. And um, uh, but we we have some key functions based on the funding for this year. We are, we are supporting the Ministry of Health in strengthening community health information system, which is a countrywide activity in all the regions and uh, the 47 counties. And then the other activities on the referrals monitoring, uh, measuring the performance of the referral systems. Again, it's a regional activity which will have, um, will require like we have presence in all the, this, the eight regions of this country. And then the other cross-cutting activity is promoting use of information across board uh, in various national health programs and again at the sub-national level. But then not, I, I, I shouldn't forget to mention that we also have uh, our admin staff uh, who have been very supportive and uh, their main work is to help, up, to, help, to help set up the logistics and making sure that the project is able to operate outside Nairobi, mm -hmm. uh, which has not been the case in the past. Excellent. So we've seen a lot of growth in staff in response to the activities. Who are our measure evaluation team as main stakeholders? Who do we serve? Well, I would say our main stakeholder is the Kenyan government and specifically the Minister of Health. And there are two ministries of health, so we work with the Ministry of, the Ministry of Health dealing with the public health services and another one dealing with the medical services. So both of them are our main clients. And um, you know we started off mostly dealing with the US government partners who are mostly NGO types. But now we've moved on, especially now with the new global health initiative requirements, uh, the principles there that we have to Things have to be government-led, hosting government-led, and country-led. So we are mostly, actually, I would say, 100% of our, our stakeholders now the Kenyan government and the Minister of Health, exclusive. Now, why do you, why do you think the Ministry of Health and the Kenyan government call upon measure evaluation for where, assistance? Where they call us for assistance? Yeah. 
Well, I guess we do a good job, but uh, more importantly, we we whenever we are called to do some work, it's always client client focused, and we we engage with the client. We don't rush with answers fast. We, we first of all listen, and we make sure that. Um, I think mesh evolution global is known, so there is that reputation issue. But then we don't just say upload this tool and this is the tool you need and you can get it from here and use it as it is. So we kind of make sure that things are client focused. And well, as you know, we have rich resources in terms of people and the tools and things that have been developed over time in mesh. We try to customize all that and uh, we don't take anything for granted. So I would imagine that's why. USAID, first of all, USAID is our first hand market here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So if they can, can come into a, into a situation where there's a need to be, to, for something to be supported, they always say, well, have you talked to Mesha? Do you think Mesha can do this? And uh, I guess many times when we are called upon, we rise up to the occasion and we do a good job. What type of expertise are you looking for as you grow the team? Mm -hmm. It's mostly health, people with uh, health systems uh, strengthening background. We want people who have an understanding of how Kenyan government works. Like I said, that's our main client. Um, so we want people with an understanding of how the Ministry of Health and Government of Kenya systems work or they don't work. And um, so mostly we find that we are people working in the public health sector. Of course, we, we are an M&D project, so we want people with an, a strong background in monitoring and evaluation. And uh, of course, also HIS is another important scale. You know, we are kind of twin sisters between M&D and HIS. So we find we have a bunch of people who have experience in working in monitoring and evaluation, but also health information system, either in governments or some other NGOs or others, other, even private sector, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, but then, other than that, we also want people with a general background in public management or public sector. I mean, because, again, to respond to Kenya, to government things, we want people who have an understanding of the public sector works. Right. And they have, they have an understanding of the policies, the, the laws governing the public sector, how the policy framework is developed, the financing, because then that we are able to engage uh, from an informed point of view with the client. Good, good. Can you tell me a little bit, or if we can move to the activities and the functions of the team a little bit? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what type of gains we've seen in the building of MNE capacity, maybe in the area of referral monitoring systems? How have we helped build capacity in that area? Well, again, this is an area we haven't done a whole lot. We are starting off all these activities, but uh, with very good prospects, uh, because like we have uh, two districts that are currently participating in the pilot. Um, you know, this activity starts, I think, two, three years back. Uh, there's a toolkit that was developed um, by our two colleagues back in the U.S., who worked for Mesh at that time. One of them is still around, actually, she's coming in next week, Svatlana, she'll be coming to join us next week. And so this toolkit was very, it's global, generic, and um, of course, as with those kinds of tools, the suggestions there may not apply across the board. So we are trying to pilot some parts of that toolkit in two districts in Kenya to ensure that um, it's, you know, it can be done here, the feasibility, can we use the HMIS as the source to populate the referral indicators. And what is coming out now is that yes, it can be done, but of course we need some improvements. So for example, our approach there is to say, can we sensitize the other workers to make sure they know what information they need to collect, what they need to, how they need to package it so that they can monitor the performance of the referral system because as an MND project really our entry point is just to measure. Yeah. So what we want to do is to empower the ministry people to know how to measure referrals. And so for us when they can measure and we have helped them to do that with the tools, with the guidelines, the SOPs, the standard operating procedures for that, we can provide them with training materials and we can we can we will also be able to sensitize them. That's why we are recruiting people in the regions. We'll be able to sensitize health workers in terms of, 
I think they're calling it facilitate and referral. I mean, you have to, it's, a, it's a proactive way of saying you have to refer not just by word of mouth. When you refer, you have to record somewhere. Mm -hmm. And you have to make sure that you can follow it, that, follow it through. At the end of the month, you can submit a report on what you've done. At a certain point in time, maybe quarterly, every six months, you can compute the indicators and be able to say, this is how I'm doing with the referral initiation. Or this is my percent of referral uptake or referral completion. These are the indicators we're dealing with. So we will consider our job done, or at least half done, if we can help, if we can empower them, which people to know how to measure. And then, of course, when they measure the performance of their referral system, we expect that whatever numbers that they, are, they deal with, now they're able to discuss in the DHM teams, the district health management teams, or other forums to, to determine what they want to do with the data. Are there any examples that you can provide of any successes where we've seen data used and something has changed as a result of data that has been collected, synthesized, analyzed, communicated to a decision maker, and actually a change has happened? I would like to believe there are very many examples, except we have not been able to capture most of them because again we have not been on the ground like but I will tell you like um, the previous project uh, where we did uh, quite a bit of work on that area we had uh, what we are calling the district health profile tool and this came as a result of we would train people take them through the standard package of here's how you use data but I think we came to realize that that's not how you you catalyze use of data it's not just it's not a training issue is sometimes even after you're done with a one week training, people will say, okay, I understand what I need to do, but then I do not have the skills, I do not have the practical skills, I do not have the tools to help me, I do not have, um, say for example, you want them to download certain data from wherever they may not have the connectivity. So there are things, practical things that are missing mm -hmm. for them to be able to use the data. Mm -hmm. And so the concept of district health profile tool was to, to assemble all the data together, the numerators, the denominators, it's the whole concept of dashboard. So within a, the click of a button, you can, you can always see your, your charts and trends and pie charts and things. And they were able to do that by, by, at the district level. Wow. So, and we trained everybody, all the districts in the country. Mm -hmm. That was a huge, a huge mm -hmm. activity. And so one thing we were trying to do with the ministry at that time was to document and in fact, we, we didn't quite complete it. We are doing that with the Futures Group as our partner. We are trying to document the experiences using district health profile to, 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 to trigger use of data at the district level. And um, I can go back to that and see if we, if uh, what we have there. But I just want to say that I believe there's a lot of instances where yeah. data has been used uh -huh. to, 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 to make some very useful decisions. How do, you think, how do you think the Emini community can maybe learn and exchange those instances of data use? How can we facilitate what we know? It's very tough and I think we have to plan for it and um, that's exactly what we wanted to do with that uh, district health profile documentation. We knew that it's not enough just to introduce a tool and have it there and keep on getting some little feedback that is being used, people are very excited about it, but we want also to make sure that we can document in a very systematic way evidence of use. And I don't think we got up to that point. Um, so I, I think there has to be a lot of coordination and collaboration with the partners, because an M&D project like us will provide technical support, mm -hmm. uh, capacity building to people who need to use the information. So we need to find a way of going the extra mile to document how how they are using all how they are not what challenges do they have. So similar to what we have, you know, like initially we do like data use constraints assessments. I think there should be a way of doing that every every other time to to find out what difference has been made. And actually, that's why we are trying to strengthen our um, internal project monitoring. Uh, now, with the AA or whether if we, you know, even with the current uh, setup that we have for the funding for this year, that's where we have Arastas, you know, Arastas Mboro. His job is to make sure that we can do very systematic internal documentation of what's going on. So, like in the regions, we will collect baselines, uh, sort of, we, not really overwhelming, but we will want to, to have some assessments on where we are 
whether it's on the referral, whether it's on the status of community health information system, aspects of use of information, then we collect some baselines of where we are, and then from time to time we'll be able to determine whether we are making some difference. Okay. Yeah. What types of um, contributions do you see measure evaluation giving to the government of Kenya and Emeni? What, what opportunities lie ahead? You know, the again within the the, well, the GHI principles, we because that's where I would definitely start. We we don't see because we come from the development partner point of view. We have the Kenyan government who needs to do these things. So our job is to help them. We are partner helping them, uh, supporting them. Sometimes it's not even a whole technical level support. It's even moral support. It's mobilizing. It's really encouraging, encouraging them to say, this, yes, you can do it. This is doable. Like this, uh, the AFIA Info project, it's very ambitious. We are saying we can do one single system, one unified integrated system. That's a huge vision right there. And sometimes it's even just saying that, yeah, you can do it. It's doable. And when you're in the room and you're talking about these things, they believe it and they hold up that vision and they move on towards it. But I think in Kenya there are lots of opportunities. But as a project, we see our entry point mostly in capacity building and in um, whether being there to support or whether even with respect to other areas of training. But we want to be there. And that's why, for example, we are taking things from national to sub-national so that the people we want to position in the regions, again, they represent our enthusiasm at that level. And sometimes, like I was saying, it's not necessary that they have to be making uh, very serious uh, technical contributions every, every bit of their time, but when they are there, they are convening forums, they are making sure that things are moving, they can fund some of the things the government is interested in, and of course they can also provide some Handed value in terms of technical support. But so I'm saying, I think that there are lots of opportunities, and maybe directly to your question, in terms of capacity building, we have needs at the national level, but more of them are the sub national. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are moving to that level. Mm -hmm. In all areas, whether it's making sure data is more available, data is more accessible, it's on better quality, we have things down there, and of course, the use of data as well. So that's why we are impacting at the sub national level. And I think now there's, there will be a lot of opportunities working in countries because I think most of the tools that have been developed in the previous um, um, in the previous work by measure I mean it's really now time to take them to the ground and making sure that um, people can really benefit from these tools and approaches that are really world class and uh, so I, I want to just imagine that uh, there's more work for measure cut out more in, in the field in countries and um, and um, that's why we consider that we have a very important opportunity to do that. Now we understand how all these tools have, have come along and uh, all these very world-class approaches, but we want to make sure that they can benefit. Where, actually, as they say, where the rubber meets the road is, can they work in countries? Mm -hmm. Can people use them? Mm -hmm. And so for us, we consider that we are really at a very important uh, vantage point of doing that, yeah. and we are trying to do that every day. We talked a little bit about the RMARS toolkit. Are there any other tools that have been applied that were developed by measure evaluation, maybe been piloted, um, or being used at the Ministry of Health? You know, I think nearly all of them actually. You really? know, the DDU tools, we are using them every day, so like the, the work going forward for measure, our main area will be trying to promote the use of information. And I see all the DDU tools coming to bear. We really make, make sure that we can customize all those Kenyan situation. So like that district health profile is not exactly uh, one of those big measure tools that came from futures and it's, it's now part of what Tara and uh, other people are working on. So these are tools that have been used in Kenya with respect to use of information. Data quality, all the tools, as you know them, in the, within the data quality, the, the tool for routine, the RDQA and the DQA tools, we have used them here. 
mm-hmm. and we are continuing to use them. Mm-hmm. Except now the country is moving on to say you can have audits, you can have external assessments, but they want to institutionalize DQA as part of some ongoing mm-hmm. uh, routine work. But I, those tools will continue to be very useful. And uh, other tools like uh, stakeholder engagement tools, I've seen them. Mm-hmm. On, uh, we are always using those. In fact, right now with all our regional people going out, we are giving them those tools to go and make sure they can do their stakeholder mapping mm-hmm. to understand who is working where, what are their interests. Because that's how you start to address the client needs. Mm-hmm. It's by understanding where they are, who they are, what are their needs, and what do they need, what support they need. and then I mean, So we are using our range of them, actually. Right. Good. Yeah. Good. Um, place? Place, yes, we did the place that they are the first ever in the region and uh, very successful. And we did it uh, not just to get the results, but also to, to capacity build many partners here in Kenya so that if they want to do their own place that is, they can do it. So we also use that one. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's see. You covered the DQA tools. Uh, did you? Did you tools? Place. Place. Any? Survey, we also used. Uh, not quite survey, but uh, we used um, some of that, Robert Musi and other people. But we did quite oh, use the, the survey. We did use the, the sampling approach. We, but you're working with the demographic surveillance sites in Kenya to improve their monitoring surveillance. And uh, again, some of the methods there were used for that. Nice. Yeah. Good. That is amazing. Let's talk a little bit about evaluation. Mm-hmm. What types of evaluation studies have you seen so far and what kind of opportunities are there for further evaluation of health programs in Kenya? What do you think? What do we need to learn? What do we need to learn? Um, you know the E and I know in many conferences you say this is an M&D project and always people say but the E is not as long as the M and uh, I think it's because you can't do E as frequently as you do the M. So here, even though we, we have been running this m and project, both in AFIA 2 and now measure, we've not done a lot of evaluations as a project. Mm-hmm. But I know there are some other partners who, who have some mandates to work in the most warm, well, but actually not even the evaluation per se, but operations research aspects like pop council, mm-hmm. they engage us in some of their discussions. Mm-hmm. And of course there are very many opportunities, but a lot of them, you know, I think deliberately on by design actually PEFA, the initial from the one go, the, the idea was to make sure that uh, they're implementing projects that have been proven to work. So you are not struggling with whether you are doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. The main issue was whether you are doing it the right way. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. so that uh, if you are doing nets, if you are doing ERBs, you, you are, all these are tested service delivery areas that bring a difference. Mm-hmm. And that's why the main focus actually been, has been on the process evaluations, trying to say, are we doing things the right way? Are we doing? Are we achieving the right coverage? Are we doing things in the right quality? Are we reaching the right people? But not so much about testing whether we are doing the right thing, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but so I would say that most of the evaluations in the country have been on the process level, mm-hmm. and um, that that has been simple to do. Like even when we do like the district health profile too that I talked about, a lot of those indicators were coverage level mm-hmm. indicators, mm-hmm. and they would say, for example, if you know you would ask a question in a district, say in a district sense, in this district, are we reaching? Uh, everybody who is eligible for ARBs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you need some, some routine data there, but also some, some survey data to be able to compute some coverage. And we, maybe you might say, okay, we're only reaching 10% of the eligible people. Mm-hmm. And so discussing that, you're able to say, now we need to make this 50%. And so when you apply resources, all the inputs, and two years down the line, you come again and look at that particular indicator and see whether have you moved from 10 to 50 or have you moved from 10 to 30. So the evolutions are quite simple. It's, it's really, and what you have been encouraging both the mission and the Kenyan government whenever we have the chance, in fact, like when we train them, is to say that uh, focus on the geographical level because there are so many partners working in these areas. And as much as the donors might want to push you and say, what difference are you making as a project? 
we try to move away from that and say, what are we doing as a district with all the people's inputs? And if the question, if it's more of a donor question, then you are able to show your individual inputs. Yeah. And uh, as long as you can prove that you're doing the right thing, then it's assumed that your input, somebody else's input, and somebody else's input will contribute to the outcome that we observe in maybe a DHS right. or some other population-based survey. From your perspective, why is m &E important? I think to me it's, it's, uh, it's very simple. It's really at the core of the programs we do. It's, it's at the core of of the of the well being is to me is the issue of I think there's that saying what gets measured gets done. That's to me what it boils down to. And if you're pumping all this money to improve things in health, in whatever, in education and everything and you don't know how well you're doing, then you can't even know how to improve those things. So it's it's really the the torch in the dark, you know, just showing you how you move and where you're going and and, and um, you, so to me, really that's what it is. It's, it's about measurement. And when you measure, now you can know are you doing very badly or very well, you can improve things from there.